Hi, I'm Dad the Engineer. Today I'm going to tell you how to set up internet connectivity that has no downtime. Before I get to that, I'm going to ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It would help me a lot, and I greatly appreciate the gesture. One thing I do better than many engineers is to meet people where they are, in terms of their understanding. In conversation, it's pretty easy to tell when someone is lost, or when they're clearly grasping the topic. In a non-interactive video, there are no such cues. Why am I mentioning this? Well, I meant to come out with my multi-WAN video much, much sooner. I was ready. I even had most of my display cards together. Then someone messaged me about one of my Starlink videos, and they had a few questions. With one of them being, what's multi-WAN? Oops. That was definitely my bad. Just like that, a perfectly okayish video was relegated to the recycle bin. This video is going to cover how you can use two or more internet connections to overcome reliability problems by having diversification guarding against risk. I have pretty good internet connectivity provided by the cable company Spectrum. It's 600 megabits down and 20 up, and while the upstream speed isn't awesome, it's pretty reliable. The problem is the reliability is very closely coupled to the uptime of the local power grid. And for me, that's about 99.12%. In easier to understand numbers, that's about 3.2 days a year. What can I say? We live in a really wooded area and we're not particularly close to a school, hospital, or fire station. So power gets restored at a leisurely pace. To counter this, many of the homes in our neighborhood have permanently installed natural gas generators, including ours. That takes care of the power problem. But what about internet? I work from home, and connectivity is critical to the work that I do. For me, and for many others that work or attend school from home, a loss of connectivity can be devastating. Whether it's a want or a need, many people want uninterrupted internet service, and don't want to try to limp along using a phone as a hotspot. That's where multi-WAN comes in. WAN stands for Wide Area Network, and for the purposes of this presentation it refers to an internet connection. Multi, as you may have guessed, means that we're dealing with more than one internet connection. Typically, a multi-WAN setup will have between two and four connectivity options. It's usually a good idea to pair a terrestrial option, like cable or fiber, with a wireless option, like cellular or satellite. It's hard to imagine a scenario where you'd ever have an outage of both cable and satellite, no? I haven't had one yet. To do something useful with multiple internet connections, you need a router that supports multiple WAN connections. Most people don't have a router that has this functionality, but that doesn't mean that getting one is expensive either. You can get a decent multi-WAN router for as little as $45. I have a Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro, which costs about $380. Most consumer multi-WAN routers are somewhere between those two price points, and I've put some of them in this table and in the video description for your reference. Once you have a properly capable router, you can usually set it up for failover or aggregation. Failover is exactly what it sounds like. You designate a connection as your primary, and you specify the order of utilization of the rest of your connections. If you have two connections, you will just have a primary and a secondary, or backup. This is a good configuration if the performance of the connections isn't comparable, especially as it relates to latency. It's also a good configuration if one of the connections has metered data usage, like many cellular and satellite plans. Aggregation, on the other hand, combines your internet connections, and is often implemented as a means of load balancing. Without any rules put in place, load balancing can just distribute traffic in a round-robin fashion across your WAN connections. This has the benefit of increasing your overall bandwidth, but it can cause unpredictable latency as you won't necessarily know what traffic is being routed over what connection. Good routers allow you to set rules for what type of traffic is routed over which connection, or even which device's traffic is routed over which connection. Setting all of this up can seem intimidating, if you've not done anything like it before, but it's not. Generally speaking, the product literature tells you where the WAN ports on the device are where you plug in your internet connections. Setting up the connections and usage strategy usually takes a minute or two. If you don't want to set up any special stuff like protocol or device routing, you're finished. In my case, my second internet connection is Starlink. My Starlink performance is about 250 megabits down and 20 up. It has higher latency than my cable internet connectivity. Because of this, I use my Starlink as a backup in a failover configuration. 
If I really ever maxed out my 600 megabit download speed, I'd consider using round robin aggregation. It's worth noting that some vendors include routers with their internet connection equipment. This is particularly true of fiber providers and Starlink, though you can see it with cellular and cable too sometimes. If that's the case, then you will have the best performance and functionality if you put your vendor's equipment into pass-through mode. This mode can also be called bypass or bridge mode, but it essentially turns off the device's router. If you don't do this, it's not necessarily the end of the world, but it does introduce something called double NAT. It also makes port mapping and special routing more difficult and can impact your speed. But I'm guessing that anybody that would want to do that can also figure out how to turn off the built-in router. My house never has downtime. My family never needs to rely on their phones because of an outage. And that's a good thing, because cell service is terrible where we live. Aside from the hardware and a little more setup on the router side, the recurring cost is the second internet connection. If eliminating your downtime is worth that cost, you should definitely implement a multi-WAN solution. If you already have a power continuity solution, like a whole house generator or battery backup, implementing a multi-WAN setup seems like a no-brainer. And that's it. If you weren't aware of multi-WAN routing before, it's probably way easier to implement than you might have imagined. If you are now curious about what secondary internet connection you should use, I have a video for that in my work from home playlist. If you found this video to be helpful and would like to see more like it, please like and subscribe. I'm just getting this thing started and I could really use your help. If you would like to contribute some feedback, please engage with me in the comments below. If, like me, you're a little old school, please check out my website, linked in my bio. Thanks and have an awesome day.